I'm feeling good, prepared, and rested. Um, my biggest concern is uh, the terrain. It's, it's very different than uh, what I'm used to in New Orleans, but um, I've trained accordingly and done everything I can do to be prepared, and so I'm ready. Well, I, uh, I'm a swimmer, college swimmer, and I've always watched the Ironman, and in 1982, um, I had watched Julie Moss and Kathleen McCarthy uh, with their unbelievable finish. And I made a promise to myself that when I turned 60, I would attempt an Ironman. Actually, I can't believe I'm a little emotional about the whole thing. The atmosphere in Kona is none like anything else I've experienced. Uh, the people, just unbelievable, from athletes to volunteers to the people that work the event. It's just awe-inspiring and a wee bit terrifying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, first time to Kona, drove the course yesterday and it was nice, you know, a little bit of wind and then we got to Harvey and it was blowing a gale and it's, you can see that because they got the uh, wind turbines up there so it'll be a tough climb up Harvey I think, no matter if it's calm down here up there it'll be pretty windy so it should be good. Raise money for trekking for kids, a charity that um, really gives back to orphans. Um, they go and they pick uh, a mountain to climb and do that for a week, and then for another week they work in a local orphanage. So, you know, I just, um, my father died when I was pretty young. Uh, I was 20 years old, and um, not that I'm an orphan, but I know what it's like when you have to go through your adolescence without um, somebody that's always there supporting you. And so I really, this charity is close to my heart. I went all the way to Europe, to the United Kingdom, and qualified in Bolton. From 1998 to 2004, I was the finish line timer for Ironman Kona. My company was Timberline Timing Systems, and I brought chip timing to the Ironman. So for me to have the time now and the support of all the friends and family that have gotten me here to be on this side of the fence as a participant, it's pretty amazing. Right now, the goal is to keep calm. All the work can be undone in one day, but nothing can be added. So just enjoying every single minute of this amazing experience. It's a Yaki. It was built by and fit by Dan Enfield and best man Derek, and it's 12 years old. I'm very grateful for their good work. You think it's going to make it? Sure! <laughs> Uh, I live here in Kailua, Kona. Um, I started triathlon a little less than a year ago. Qualified at the Half Ironman in Honu. Really super excited. It's been the greatest experience of my life so far. It's going to be one of the hardest days of my life tomorrow. Nerves are off the charts right now. The town is just absolutely crazy. All of you guys are so awesome for being out here and supporting. Just uh, so, ex so excited to be a part of this, this epic adventure here. I am in the 18 to 24 age group. This is my second year competing. I raced last year as well. I qualified at the St. Croix Half Ironman. So this is actually my second full Ironman. I've only done Kona and uh, really excited to be back. I learned a lot last year. It's an unbelievable experience and I can't wait to do it again. Race day tomorrow, my biggest challenge is going to be making the bike cutoff. Uh, definitely the, the biggest obstacle by far. Uh, you know, just got to get out of the water strong, uh, but also quickly enough to allow enough time on that bike. Um, you know, climbing the hills on a hand cycle is just slow going. It's just a long grind. Obviously, you can't get up out of the saddle. You're using small muscles. Uh, so making the way up to Javi and, and just dealing with some of the conditions here as a hand cycle athlete are a little bit different and our cutoff times are exactly the same. I have to be in transition by 5.30 just like everybody else. So hitting that bike cutoff is definitely what is weighing heaviest on my mind for tomorrow.
first of all, it was incredible. I mean, everybody dreams of going to Kona, and now I see why. The atmosphere was just electrifying. The volunteers were fantastic. Well, I actually, you know, probably occupational hazard. I had melanoma, um, and, uh, you know, when you have cancer, it really changes your perspective. This race, I raised money for the Lance Armstrong Foundation. It gave a lot more meaning. I felt emotional at, at the finish, just thinking about kind of where I was five years ago getting chemo and you know and where I am now and I just feel really blessed to be able to be here it was a, a, an amazing day an amazing opportunity and I felt that you know I had a lot of a ton of support coming into this yeah uh, Jose's heart it's a nonprofit I founded with a friend this last year um, and it serves uh, sexually abused girls in Swaziland Africa it, it, it fights the sex slave trade and um, we're starting a girls' home in Swaziland as, as a safe house uh, for girls that are high at risk um, for domestic abuse. And uh, so people could sponsor this race, $100 a mile. All the proceeds went to starting this girls' home. We raised over $5,000, which goes a long way uh, in Swaziland. I mean, this is, no matter what your race turns out like, I mean, this is just an experience of a lifetime. And you know what? Uh, this year's theme, the sparkling eyes of our roots, was just so appropriate. I had over 20 family and friends here uh, that committed to coming before I even qualified. They said we'll be there, and you know, um, I just I just feel so blessed that, uh, that 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 they invested in me and um, that they invested in this sport. And you know, that's what it's all about, Ohana family. And uh, you can definitely feel it here amongst the athletes as well. We're family.